dear viewers, fellow casuals, you're watching Primetime Casual and Jack is very loud actually. You're watching Primetime Casual and I'm here at Jack's station and I'm about to make my insurance broker cry. There it is. Jack's station. I am here in my ass once again. I'm actually recording this instead of streaming um, basically because there might be some um, timing issues with what I'm about to do uh, real time timing issues so um, if we arrive at the wrong uh, wrong time I can just cut it out later so without further ado I have I have traveled actually actually by accident more or less to Colonia and don't ask me how I can accidentally travel to Colonia, but I did it. Um, and I thought it would be nice, I have marked it somewhere over here. Six hundred and nine light years, more or less to the south uh, southeast of um, Colonia. And if you don't know what this is, this is I don't have the system data available. Very um, sad. This is, as you can see, a white dwarf. Now I have a history with white dwarfs. I don't like them very much. Um, I'm still traveling here because this white dwarf has a planet orbiting it, which is landable, and inside the exclusion zone. Sounds like fun. And there we have it. And nobody told me that this is some kind of binary. How very exciting. Very exciting. Um, white walls are quite bright. And scary. So, um, this is it. This is the white wolf. Life Ericsson discovered Very nice of him. Hate you. Uh, a typical white dwarf. It's very hot, somewhat, and um, just zero point of t what? <laughs> hmm, excuse me, zero point three four light seconds away, uh, a landable planet. Yeah, I don't don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I honestly don't know what to say to that. Uh, I will have to... And th there you can see it. I'll see if I can get that a better shot. Uh, there you can see um, it crosses the star. What the hell. And it goes through the, uh, the cones. But it seems that we are currently in luck. Um, so, shall we have another go? The first attempt ended in something exclusion zone of the White Dwarf. Let's see if I have more luck now. I don't think so. But we can try. Approach it as carefully as possible. From the far side, I have heat sinks. I do have heat sinks somewhere. Well, this is still very scary. We can closer than last time, at the very least. Oh dear lord, this might actually work. This might actually work. We can switch that off. Oh, it's a breathtaking sight. I want a glimpse. I want a glimpse. Just give me a glimpse of that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Taking screenshots as I go. Oh god, this is bright. This is also somewhat scary. Okay, I'm caught with that planet now. Um. Oh, 
this is mesmerizing and disturbing at the same time. And not in a good way like uh, New Africa was on Meter and Hollow. I quite enjoyed that. I don't enjoy this. 1.1z. <laughs> I just noticed we're above one Z. Uh, give me a second. So let's pretend I never went down there, shall we? I'm situated here a hundred kilometers above the surface of the planet of dead, Mont de la Mort. Uh orbiting very close to a white dwarf. I just noticed hello, can we stop? I just noticed that we have slightly above one Z. <sighs> Hold my beer. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Since I want to get above a thousand. And I think that um, pulling out of this dive might be tricky because heat levels. The ASP isn't as bad as the hollow was on uh, Chi Hydra. Uh, but Chi Hydra wasn't, <laughs> wasn't so close to a white wolf. I, I have to say this, it wasn't as close to a white wolf. We're at 70 kilometers and 900 meters per second. I want to get above 1000 meters per second for sure. The ASP unlike the Type 9 that I bolted like um, two weeks ago, I think, um, the S9 is actually able to pull out. Let me rephrase that. The ASP has thrusters that can level out the dive. Let's play it safe. Let's guess it now. And hit him. I can't. I can't see my uh, vertical speed indicator. Well, that's slightly disturbing. Ah, oh no, we're fine. We're fine. I can see the altitude. Um, just so I um, thought I'd treat you to a bit of speed bowling. And there we are. Um, someone on stream, which uh, if I had streamed, could have told me that I still have my shields deactivated. Would have saved me a couple of hull percentage. So, activate um, this, deactivate this. Basically, I'm de deactivating everything, so in the hopes that when I recall the ship, it won't explode with heat. Oh well. Oh, this is bright. So here we are. In my good old SOV, the Perseverance. Driving around on the planet of death. I don't know. So, shall we dismiss the ship? This may be the last time I see it. Yeah, don't boost, please. I did that, it's not good. Right. Hello, I'm bringing you in because I waited some time off screen, off camera, and well, the planet is making its orbit around around the star. Thankfully, because it's so close, it's also a very fast orbit. You know, a um, scientifically correct fast orbit, unlike Meter and Hollow. A bit further back, maybe. And it's SOV is very loud. Better. Um, scientifically correct uh, fast orbit, so it's like, I don't know, I think I heard something around 80 minutes. And that's on the horizon. Seems to oh, uh, seems to be uh, 
Actually, the jet cone of that white wolf. So I'm traveling in that direction in hopes of getting a better view. And if I do, I'll bring you back. But already the, the horizon looks like it's on fire and it's, it's fantastic. It's really spectacular. If you are near Colonia and have a ship that's not you know, too expensive and maybe have a SOV on board or you know, buy a cheap ship on it Jax, it's, it's 600 and 610 uh, light years, so even even a, even a cheap ship without any engineering can can do it in a reasonable amount of time. Um, do do travel here. It's just um, quite a thing. I'll keep traveling this direction in the hopes of catching a better glimpse of it and bring you back. We have cleared now the first uh, the furthest point I think during the orbit through the uh, jet cone of the white dwarf and I'm waiting for the white dwarf to you know, come up on the horizon but I wanted to just show you this this beautiful sunrise actually um, this is one of the beautif beautiful moments of Elite um, when I can actually see the sunrise and the planets in motion I think it's, it's um, it's just beautiful. Can run other games that are flashier, have better graphics or more features or something, but it's is this these things that really keep me keep playing elite. I don't know about you, but yeah. Essentially, there you have it. A nice yellowy sun up on the horizon. That's also very close. F far too close for comfort actually. Um, I'll see how long it just takes the white water as you can you can uh, I'm already all zoomed in. You can see the solar flares on the on surface. That was fantastic. Um, yeah I'll wait for the white water to come around and then bring you in for another shot. And I nearly missed it. As you can see, I'm in the turret for a better view. I'm skewed. Come here. Why can't I turn the heart off completely? Dear Lord! This is. No, give me external. What? That was. scary. Turn the lights off. Wow! Did you? Oh, I almost missed it. That goes by so fast. <sighs> Thank God I have it uh, on a hotkey. The recording. Just look how the light changes. Um, incidentally, this <laughs> is probably a time where you don't want to recall your ship. Uh, oh, come on. FDF, the lighting. What was with the ambient? <sighs> well, um, yeah. So there we are. I'll just wait until it's completely behind the horizon. Just to give you an answer, this cone, you you rarely see them, so you know so clearly. Also, did you see the lensing effect on that thing? Uh, I mean, uh, it's more or less common knowledge that neutron stars and white dwarfs also have the lensing effects of, of um, black holes, but to see it that up close, because usually you don't get that close to white dwarfs because you'll just die. And there we are. This is not a rainbow and there's no pot of gold in the end. There's just hot, fiery, white, angry death. Let's recall the ships then, shall we? I'm scared. Ah, what the hell? Where is it? Where is it? Where is my poor little ship? Is the autopilot really stupid enough to try and come to me? 
I wouldn't. If I was a ship, I would say, screw this, I'm going back to Jack's for beer. There we are. Woo! Casserole. Well, this is gonna hurt a bit. Yeah. And can we do a 360? No, we can't. Anyway. Let's let's have a little checklist, shall we? We traveled to the planet of death. Check. We successfully landed on the second attempt. Check. We drove around in SRV and dismissed the ship without it blowing up. Check. We even recalled the ship without it blowing up. Check. And now we'll see if I can uh how shall we call it? Launch. Let's see how it goes, shall we? Heat sinks activated. Now that's no good. That's no good. I would like the fuel scoop, but not the planetary hangar. Let's shoot to it. Oh, I start now. Now. This is this is um, the interesting bit. I have to oh, I I see the problem now. We are launching, and if you're still in the exclusion zone, I won't be able to super cruise. And that's that looks dangerous. Let me get a better look. Well, that looks positively dangerous. as in deadly. So what I'm going to do, and this is actually apparently one of the few tricks you can uh, try to escape a cone if you drop to real space inside the cone of a white dwarf or a neutron star. This is okay, and let's just wait for another screenshot here. Um, there we are. Isn't that a cute little white dwarf visit? No. You're so small and angry and hot. Uh, what I should have done, all I should have done is I go here. Nope. Nope. Yeah. And pick a target to jump to it directly in front, so I don't have to enter super cruise first. Um, I guess, as we say here in Germany, sag zum Abschied, leise servus und ade. Oh god your lord, this is hot! I should have stayed in cockpit instead of... Well, that's okay. Well, this is fine. <laughs> instead of a quite serious I have a scream of heat levels yes I am aware of that thank you cool and purge initiated well the leaving was much more exciting than the approach don't you think and there we are back at Jax ready for a beer or whatever they serve don't know what the French beer. Did in the end, I did take the neutron route. Five neutron stars. It's just so much, so much quicker. And seriously, after that planet of death, God, I'm. You see? Ha ha ha! They could have told me. What did anyone tell me? I did request docking. Guess I didn't. No, I uh, just locked the target. How very stupid of me. I made it back to Zerx, etc. Beard, wine, proof, neutron. What are those belugas doing? What am I doing? Would you kindly stop? 
The brakes on this thing aren't... <laughs> they are not getting through the tiff. I can tell you that much. So there we are, finally. Uh, there we are. Short trip to the planet of death. Landed, drove around and took off again. Successfully. And survived. I'm very happy how this all turned out. It was... Uh, both beautiful and very, very scary. I can only recommend you do it too. Um, the planet should have been on screen, the planet name, all the time. It's Nicolonia, 610 light years uh, in the direction of Sol. Don't go there from Sol, go there from Zax, please. For your own sanity. And try it out. It's just fantastic place. It's not nearly as dangerous as made out to be. Just make sure that the planet isn't too close to the White Dwarf or the Cone uh, when landing and when recalling a ship and you'll be fine. Do it. It's fantastic. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, if you like this uh, sort of stream on tape, please leave a like, leave a subscribe, maybe even maybe even click that little, little bell icon or something and uh, Follow me on Twitter as well. The link should be somewhere around here. It's easy to find. I'm Primetime Casual. Thank you for watching and goodbye.